Hi guys, welcome to episode three of it's three. It's three of Beowulf TV. We still haven't really thought about a great name. Beowulf TV kind of works with YouTube, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. And this is where you're probably watching it off, and um, definitely watching it off. <laughs> um, so it is late April, believe it or not. Already, which is crazy. 2018 for those watching next year <laughs> when you're looking back at this years later and um, yeah episode three and um, so this is where myself and scott discuss um the past two weeks of goings on here at bell training in pearly south east london um sun's out guns out yeah start off with. i think the uh the temperature last week was ridiculous like hitting peaks of 29 degrees yeah. However, that being said, having 29 degrees of temperature outside, what a crazy impact that has on one's like ability to just carry out the day. Like, how like, much better it makes. Oh man! Like I just like, getting up in the morning, first thing in the morning at 5:30, easier. Mm. Getting here for first appointment at 6:30 in the morning, easier. Getting up out of bed, easier. Like training, easier. Better environments, train less creaks and knocks. Like joints don't like literally the sunshine fixes everything. You just feel happier, right? Oh, without a doubt. Like my my hour long drive that it takes me to get here, just better with the windows down. Hang your arm out. Tunes, yeah. Hang the arm out. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, just make. I totally agree. And people are just in great moods. Yeah, you, know. you get people coming in and they're like they're ready to train. Yeah. Because they're in a better mood. They're they're ready to attack a workout rather than being like oh you know the weather outside is terrible. Yeah. yeah. And letting that thing affect their mood and their ability to drain which always baffles me yeah what <laughs> hello someone knocks on the door you know, we, actually we need a little sign what time is 10 it 10 past 4 huh. we need a little sign on the door say we're filming ignore do not knock on the door put like a cowboy out on the side <laughs> people might get the wrong idea <laughs> <laughs> a sock what's that from meet the fuckers <laughs> cowboy hat <laughs> yeah it's just like <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> that's, that's weird. Um, yeah, so I mean, the other thing with the sun as well was London Marathon happened uh, two days ago. Yeah. Um, which is awesome for me. My, my flat overlooks the marathon route. Um, so we're around sort of mile seven in Greenwich, and it's just awesome. Like, we, we get friends around, cooked a big load of American style pancakes, bought a load of fruit and everything. So people were just bacon. Um, nice. maple syrup all that kind of thing just as, as a bit of like come in we'll feed you all had some drinks ended up going to the pub and then I love that so dinner. eating all that watching people run 26 <laughs> yeah just be like he's a bit slow isn't he whilst, you, <laughs> whilst you're having like bacon and maple syrup um, but we ran out to see Pav run we saw Mo Farah run and then Pav our colleague um, who is an amazing amazing runner he, he came sprinting by like near the front um literally sprinting by running at a pace at seven miles that i would struggle to run like fresh <laughs> um, and uh, i'm looking super chilled with it however he he had to bow out halfway through he didn't have to he chose to um just because with the heat and everything um pab's done something like 15 marathons or something silly um because of the heat he was doing it slower than he wanted to do and basically <laughs> got halfway it off. and had done like an hour and he got halfway in an hour and 15 or something I can't remember yeah. which is a ridiculously fast time and was just like yeah I could be doing better with this and he, he said himself he's like he doesn't need to he doesn't, want, not, he doesn't want to finish him he doesn't do it for a finisher's medal he's doing yeah. it for his preparation for Berlin so yeah I think the way that he viewed it is as Berlin's later on in the year is if he continued to do the London he'd miss up to a week's worth of decent training which will then potentially put him off track towards his actual goal yeah which is Berlin and also I think he was he was feeling pretty ill and I stuff think, after the race and I, I think it's one of those things where we also ought imagine particularly for someone who's an athlete of his calibre you have to take into account your own health in that instance as well yeah so like is running a 245 marathon if you've rubbed to run 230 sub 230 before is that extra, like is completing the marathon in two forty five worth you going and finishing it? Yeah. It and he, in that instance it was like, well actually no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not. He had a friend that he says was actually crossed the halfway point before him and carried on and the remaining half took him 
way longer and he ended up on a drip and that, that throws out all his training so it yeah. was really smart like Pav knows his body when it comes to running to just go okay this isn't going to get me a time that, that warrants the, the risk yeah he's, so, he's doing it to, yeah. to run the marathon so take up the challenge of running 26.2 miles as fast as he can yeah that's what he does it for other people will do it for charity other people will do it just to do a marathon yeah. and to say that they've completed a marathon and don't really care about the time for him that's what it's about. That's his goal. His goal is to run as fast as he can. So if he gets halfway and he's already behind schedule, then for him it's kind of like, yeah. It's the equivalent of well, me, me going for a one rep max deadlift and then picking up the weights and getting to a point and being like, oh, this, I'm not feeling it today. I'll call it off, I'll dial it back, and I'll come back and do it again. It's just he's doing it with a marathon. <laughs> That's his gauge. Which the, is biggest, the biggest running race in the world. But either way, we were super proud of Pav um, yeah, like, no. what he does is insane we see we see well we don't, I don't see it I'm not in, in the car next to him when he's running but we see him going out and doing his, his training every we see him leave day. we see him leave we see him come back an absolute sweaty mess yeah and you we can imagine he's not just running around the block in order to be able to do that <laughs> just spritzes himself <laughs> yeah, you know and has I mean? a burger and then so and I'm sure when Berlin comes around that he's going to be in peak peak condition is to smash that up so and lots of his clients and stuff are on the marathon and, and things like that yeah, i think a couple of people did brighton last week and cracking results yeah which um, is awesome so yeah that 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 happened with us um yeah i just, I just got drunk to be honest like we just we had i was f- working we had friends there from i was living the dream mate i was <laughs> at the gym we had friends there from nine in the morning i mean breakfast and then ended up feeding them dinner and going to the pub in between days me and my wife get into it every year and it's just like a really cool car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never well, We're trapped in our flat. We're You've trapped never, in are you? on the inside of the, the marathon route. So we can't like drive out after a certain time. Or if you do, you can't come back because the road's closed. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can get a train, but it's just Greenwich is buzzing. Everyone's it's just happy. an excuse for you to go out with your mates. And awesome. when the weather's nice, it's, it's perfect. So, so marathon was this weekend. Uh, last weekend, we had our fortnightly staff training. Staff training. In that staff training, the thing we've been trying to work on the guys, or with the guys, is for, to get them kind of using the online training system a little bit more. Um, so we can obviously better help service more online clients. Mm. And in order to be able to do that, what we did is we got them to plan sessions for each other and then deliver those sessions within the staff training. So we kind of killed two birds with one stone. We worked on the ability to program on the system and also then worked on the ability to train people face to face. So we were looking at the ability to obviously cue, deliver a session, looking at timing, appropriate intensity, and just generally throwing down and having a workout together, which was awesome. Um, I think for me, when we had odd numbers, it, was a, it sucked a little bit because I couldn't really get involved. I was that guy on social media just taking footage um, and critiquing some bits, but I stood in for Beth. Didn't you I? stood, yeah. You were, you were, you, you were Beth for the session. So I got, I, I got a session that Ryan had, that, that Ryan had planned for Beth. He he coached me he through, it on and you. I coached Beth's session that she planned for Ryan. <laughs> Which is quite funny because it's obviously it was loads of kettlebell stuff. And yeah. the last time you taught the kettlebell workout was oh, two I, weeks ago I, on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I like. I like kettlebells and stuff like that. I'm by no means as good at kettlebell coaching as, as Beth, but they're in it wide the challenge. That's the point of staff training. I exactly. refresh some old exercises that I've not coached. As a coach, you go through low, like phases with things and you get really into a certain thing. Um, and then other things you kind of forget about them. You're like, ah, like yeah. kettlebell cleans. I've been doing dumbbell cleans for ages in my class. It's got really into doing dumbbell cleans and stuff like that. And it's like, Cool. Just another thing that I want to dust off and bring out and, and use again. So that was really cool. And it was really cool just being coached by Ryan. Ryan Ryan's a great coach. Um, and trying to kind of when he was setting me things, been like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and then some. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and so like yeah. on my warm up, I, I remember got, the warm up. I got went, so good. Ryan's like, went to town on row as fast as you can, <laughs> like in these these splits. And I was just hell for leather. Like, I'm gonna impress Ryan. But it didn't serve me very well. <laughs> and then it was game over. Couldn't do the rest of the session. <laughs> the rest of the, I know you did. No, he's like, you were he'd, blowing though, mate. He'd, give, he'd, he'd given me like loads of pull-up based stuff. And like the session before, I'd done part of my workout, real grippy workout. 
and I finished with four sets of like max pull-ups to failure and then Ryan's got me like hanging on a bar doing just negatives like, isometric oh, holds yeah, just, just like <laughs> holding on the top but great fun um, and it was good watch it Francis had given JT just a disgusting it, it was one of those things where again we were trying to talk about like appropriate intensity to the individual what, what Francis's goal was I think was to absolutely ruin James but he basically just gave him a Francis workout as the way I describe it is the fact that Francis is obviously at a level of fitness which is beyond what some of us are at and he's like all of us are at all of us are at in certain things but yeah all of us are at in terms of conditioning like yeah. metabolic conditioning he was like yeah you know like I tested it I tested it like you can get all this stuff done in two minutes no, I didn't find like, too bad. yeah you could Francis but, but me and I think it was it was one of those things where, where we only have an hour and a half to train each other. I kind of had to split it, didn't I? Yeah. So you only had, in effect, around 25 minutes of coaching time. I think JT was very, very pleased when they called time on his. Because well, he think, did. He was doing like, it. He, he cracked on. He got on with it. I think he was, like, round two or five. And I think it was, like, about to start round three. And he was like, cheers, mate. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for saving me on that one. Because I think the thought of doing another three rounds was... Uh, was intense. Yeah, I think it border borderline killed him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, like I say, every single every single time we do this episode, I, I love the staff training. Yeah. It's when well, we get on with our own business every single day, day to day, week to week. It's so good to get together and just work out together or pick a theme. And I personally like, like I said, I like learning from the guys, but I like trying to impart some of the knowledge that I've got from the industry and helping them to develop their businesses and improve the results for their clients and I think it's awesome I, it's so good I'd it's definitely that. something that we do different to a lot of other oh, yeah. PT studios I don't know a lot of other trainers that we, we've had some interviews with some new trainers recently and again they're kind of amazed that that's something that we prioritise as one of the ethos of our gym um, and our brand and our business which is great yeah I, it's something ha- I had a session the other night so I, I finished up I was, I was doing my PT and like um I think Ryan was coaching, Pav was coaching, maybe Mike, and just it was really good atmosphere in there. You're watching these great coaches be awesome, which when you're coaching is is mega. It's infectious. Isn't yeah, it? and then I'd I'd done a workout with Francis earlier that day. We were working through power cleans, and that was great fun. You know, coming here, JT was setting up his massage table and like working through some real knowledgeable, like clever shit. <laughs> in other yeah. words and then I, I went we to, don't do yeah and then I went to say, <laughs> say bye to you and went up into the CrossFit gym where you were doing a class and you were going through through it all just kind of watched that for an appropriate time for me to be like bye Scott <laughs> rather than just, just shouting over you um, and just watched some of that and kind of took it all in had a, had a really good session with my client um, with my client Kay who's new to it all and he was just like wow this is awesome and he was just like Drove home, just a big smile on my face. Like this is what it's all about. This is what the kind of thing, the the kind of environment we've been trying to create from day one. Well, that was the dream of when we started, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like, wouldn't it be really cool if one day we could kind of have our own, mm. our own space and our own gym where we had this type of people coming and working, and we had these type of trainers, and we had an ethos that was really kind of deep bedded into the way that we carried out our day to day jobs and. Uh, Again, it's by no means we're, we've not reached the peak of where we want to get to, but yeah. we're definitely on the right lines of where, where we want to be. We're still, like, I was like, this is one of the best training environments in London, comfortably. Yeah. Like, comfortably. I'd be, I'd be really confident saying that. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's just great fun. More than anything. Like you, when you work in gyms, um, it's really easy to get slogged down by all the crap. On the outside of your sessions like we've both been there with oh, yeah, in I other don't. places I just don't get that here and particularly when when we've got responsibilities here obviously that they, they can take their toll on everything but the actual essence of coaching I'm, I just enjoy like it's just it's just really good here um, yeah and then then the other thing uh, is the nutrition course that we've got in Matt yeah so we've um, we've selected our final attendees we're up to I think there's now 14 people now that are going to be taking on our, our first focus group, which mm-hmm. is going to start on the 4th of May. Um, may so the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. So we're working towards that date, basically. So we've got all uh, most of the lectures in place um, based on the consultations we had with each one of the, the participants before. So kind of making sure we can kind of pitch the right 
level of knowledge to people to make sure they can get the best result over the eight weeks. Got some emails to send out this week about just getting some additional information so we can work out some some nutrition targets and stuff that people are going to kind of start their process with, um, along with some other goodies that we're looking to order as well, but we won't reveal that just yet. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool. I love the uptake. I love the fact that people are actually passionate about making change about nutrition. I think it's one of the things that Matt's always said. The nutrition is definitely one of those things on the fitness journey that always comes under training. Well, actually, for most goals, it should be that that's the the first thing that people yes. really get control of, and then training kind of comes second. Um, so it's quite cool that people are acknowledging that, and it's quite cool to learn a little bit more from Matt as well. Um, I'm looking forward to the process starting, really. Yeah, I'm as excited as some of the guys are as well. So. I've, me and Matt have been really working on the. the well, Matt's been kind of talking. I'd say he's been I've talking been, at you. Yeah, he's been talking at me, telling me what he wants to cover, and been helping him shape that into the the kind of structure of each week. Well, it's been cool because, again, his background is a lot with, and again, it's not all with elite athletes, but he's worked a lot with elite people mm. in different sporting backgrounds where we've worked is with general population. So kind of marrying the knowledge and being able to then not dilute it, but frame it in the right way that's going to make it understanding to our demographic and the people that we work with mm. is definitely something you guys have been working on, right? Yeah. Rather than being like uber scientific and trying to be like, blah, yeah. with loads of knowledge of people, it's about giving people digestible chunks that they can take away every week. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're doing little things like little handouts for each one. We're coming up, we've come up with this kind of method of having something that you can stick on your fridge at the end of every session and that's what you're working on. That little, it's a goal or for the um, next week before this, you do your next one before you then go or your next lecture it. yeah just so there's something at the forefront there's the, you know like every session we always start every week with a name what do we want these people to walk away with and do for the next week and then that kind of shapes the content of the course right yeah and all we're trying and again is the, the, the main part of the course is we've done we've done a nutrition seminar in the past and the goal of that seminar was to give people knowledge mm. but in terms of our giving people knowledge it's great, so they have good understanding, but in terms of, it doesn't really help people to build habit. Mm. The whole point of this focus group is to help people to not only learn knowledge, but also apply that knowledge into changing habits. Yeah, yeah. And changing habits, we both know, and again, our team will know, is what gets people and yields results for people. You can have all the knowledge, like the fitness industry, social media, you've, you don't have to go far to find someone who's highly knowledgeable in nutrition. No. But to find someone who can help you apply that to your lifestyle and a step-by-step -step process, that is very, very difficult to come yeah. by. Um, and again, that's something that we're trying to do. That's the whole point of the focus group is to educate people, but to actually legitimately change people's lives, right? Yeah. Through changing their habits. Sounds cheesy, but... It, it is, and again, like, we, 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 said it, we said it in that first video, and it was a little bit like, mm, is it right saying that? But you are changing someone's life. It's got the potential to... Uh, without a doubt. Use some simple steps and just actually just putting a little bit more effort into some simple simple theory, just putting it into practice. You could really kind of transform your body composition, your energy level, your skin, all that kind of stuff mm. that people constantly complain about. Mm. There's some of their obstacles. It's got the potential to do that. Awesome. That sounds like um, awesome. a pretty cool two weeks. Um, yeah. But you don't want to bore with the, 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 the cleaning duties and all that. They don't want to hear about that, do they? We mopped, we vacuumed. Um, <laughs> we kept it as a cleanly place for people to come and train as well. <laughs> we, we were actually talking whilst we were doing it. We were like, this is one of the most, like, no one appreciates when things are, are really clean. They only realise when it gets dirty. Yeah, so you, it's like, you were yeah, like, yeah. I've mopped this floor three days in a row now. And yeah. no, no one's going, yeah, this this floor's not got any dust. And, and I suppose we don't, don't expect people to, but it's, it, I don't know. It takes it's a, a lot nice, of time. It's a nice little belly rub if it takes you an hour to clean the gym and then someone's just kind of... Oh, Good job, buddy. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, didn't the floor look nice and clean before they rub chalk all over it and cut the chalk all over the place. Vomit um, on it. But anyway, that's a conversation for another day. The logistics of... Boring of stuff. living in a gym, as we do. Yeah, got my bed over there. <laughs> Not my so. bed's on the Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that's two weeks. We will see you in a fortnight. Nice. I think you're funny. <laughs> <laughs>